Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome back to another crazy and exciting and educational episode of the one and only Crash Course. Hey folks, uh, good to be with you again. Uh, last week I got uh, pretty hot and heavy and animated talking about the EVs, <laughs> the electric vehicle uh, invasion, right? It's like the British invasion. Um, actually, it's not. It's more, it's more like the, uh, the European invasion, I guess. European invasion on steroids, uh, hybrid, because America picks it up and just goes nuts with it. We're going to save the world. We're going to, we're going to save, uh, you know, the environment, the climate, blah, 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 and get, and get piss poor and, um, and on a road to surf them while the rest of the world keeps moving forward, right? It's all nuts. Hey, I just want to clear the air though before we get, uh, all involved here, crash course. Um, you know, we didn't, we, I didn't, I didn't highlight all that stuff, all right, because I know we have a broad audience here, and I just want everybody to know out there in, <laughs> in, the, uh, in the blogosphere, all right, or the uh, podosphere, I don't know, is that even a word, podfear, podosphere, um, just want everybody to know that, you know, this was not an attack on, on you, all right, Mr. EV driver, Miss EV driver, okay, if you like those cars, that's great, don't have a problem with that, right? Uh, what I have a problem with is the free market approach to it, or lack of, all right? Um, that's that's the issue here, okay? And I think I, I kind of was probably illustrating that a little bit, um, but I'm, that might have got lost in, in translation or in the weeds. So, you know, don't misinterpret what was said in the last episode to to seem like, you know, I'm I'm basically blowing up a whole demographic of people here when it comes to the, you know, the car industry. I'm not, you know, same goes for solar energy, right? If that turns you on, if that's cool, if you like that, you know, I mean, there's people in my family that have it, they swear by it. And, um, that's great. You know, you should be able to do that and, and utilize everything that you feel that you need or you like, right? Obviously. I mean, that's the definition used to be anyway of America, right? Freedom of choice, freedom of association, right? And that used to apply to, uh, everything, really, right? Including uh, the economics. But that doesn't seem to be the case when it comes to the electric vehicles and the hybrids and all this other nonsense that they cram down our throat now. Uh, like I said, like I said last week, the big three, right? They, the big three, basically, I think, the, well, um, the dingbat of GM anyway, whatever the hell her name is. She's out there running around shooting a mouth off last year about how they were not going to make any gasoline cars as of 20, whatever, 2030 or something. You know, I mean... Just think about how more, I mean, what idiot would even, you know, say that, let alone actually commit to that? I don't know. Uh, I think it's moronic. Um, but, you know, that's, I guess they think that that's what's going to be good for GM. I don't We'll have to see. I don't think it is. Uh, but, folks, just like I said, I just want to clear the air. I wasn't demonizing you. If you drive an EV, if you if you like your Tesla, if you like your Toyota Prius, if you, you know, if you like your Mercedes electric car, your BMW, that's great. That's super. If it works for you, you know, and you bought it, like I said, you know, get that mirror out and look in the mirror. And if you bought that car, right, because you really totally psyched and I, I can see myself in that car. I like that car. I want to drive that car. You know, I'm just nuts for that car. It fits your personality, character. Then terrific. You know, all the best. Um, but the statistics aren't bearing that out. All right, and that's what we were trying to highlight in the last episode. The statistics just aren't bearing that out. All right, and I know facts are, are little inconvenient truths these days, but they still exist, okay? <laughs> yes, they do. All right, you may have to dig a lot further today or peel away that onion, but they, they do exist, all right? And unfortunately, here at Crash Course, we, we utilize them. We, re, we rely on them. Oh, I should say, unfortunately, for some people, maybe, we rely on facts, all right? And the fact is, is that the statistics and the uh, the data bear it out that, uh, you know, people aren't actually that turned on about these electric cars, right? And I got into the, I got into some depth on that. But I did promise you, did promise you, and I do here at Crash Course, we do love to deliver on our promises. Uh, Anthony's got a grin on over there. And uh, I did promise that I was going to get that additional data that I had written down. Of course, I forgot the sheet again, but... Did take a look at it for you last night. So uh, the data re re with respect to the EVs, all right, if you f if you followed us and you, you, you saw the last episode, um, 
if I seem like a, I'm talking like a moron here, just bear with me. I just got back from vacation, so I got kind of like the vacation brain going on. All right, and uh, but anyway, um, yeah. So I wanted to make sure that I got those stats to you. All right, with that I promise. Okay, and this was regarding the electric vehicles and the hybrids and that, that type of stuff. So here we go. Ready? EVs are 22 percent more now. Again, folks, this is data that's been compiled over the last five to eight years. Okay. So EVs, electric vehicles, are on average, and I know there's going to be folks out there, the statistician types, you know, they're going to, the mathematicians, they're all going to be putting that, their uh, thinking hats on right now. So ah, that's not really right. You know, uh, this is on average. Okay, I'm not saying that in other parts of the country and, and, and stuff like that, that this might be a little skewed. But on average, electric vehicles, right, and that means hybrids and things like that, are 22% you know, 22%, hello, hello, 22% more expensive, all right, to insure. A fact, <laughs> not a factoid, a fact. Uh, again, the 22%, yeah, you know, that might be somewhat skewed to the, you know, the, the uh, to wherever you are. But on, on average and generally speaking across the country, they're 22%. Now, again, if you like the car and you don't care about that, fantastic, no problem. I drive an SUV, I pay a little more money because I drive an SUV, right? You, somebody in your family drives a sports car, they, they pay a little more money on their premium because it's a sports car, right? We all know about that, all right? But again, these are just statistics, these are just facts, and they dovetail with what we were talking about in the last episode, all right? So I kind of wanted to, I wanted to get this additional information because it, it kind of provides a little more of a framework for what I was trying to illustrate, you know, in the last episode. Um the other thing is, is they are much more expensive to maintain. They just are, right? Mechanically speaking, um, I would add electrically speaking, right? Um, but folks, don't forget, these cars are electric, right? They're electric vehicles, hence EV, but they are mechanical, okay? They are still mechanical in nature. What do I mean by that? I mean, they have the same mechanical, for the most part, they have the same mechanical um, functions as a gasoline car, right? So you have the transmission, you have the steering, the suspension. It's all the same. They have struts, they have shocks, right? They have rack and pinion, they have disc brakes. It's all the same stuff, all right? It's more expensive to maintain these cars. And of course, much more expensive, and I can speak obviously from experience, right? Uh, because I fix these cars. I see these cars on a daily basis. Well, I mean, the shop that I work in, V&J Auto Body. By the way, did I mention V&J Auto Body? It's one of our amazing client shops. You can find find them and a lot more at Collision Services Network, collisionservicenetwork.com. Please go there if you haven't. If you have, go there again anyway. Stay familiar with what's there uh, on average, right? On average, the Department of Transportation says all of us, unfortunately, on average, will have some kind of a uh, an accident every 10 years. All right? So please get familiar with CollisionServiceNetwork.com. It's there for the folks. It's there for the independently owned and operated auto body guys here across the great fruited plain of Long Island. And we have some of the most amazing client auto body guys there. And they're, uh, they're waiting to take care of you, fix your car the way you want it, and, of course, most importantly, look out for your interest. All right, but I digress. Much more expensive on the body shop, folks, okay, for a number of reasons. All right, labor rate is higher. All right, labor rate is higher. In my shop, we have specialized technicians that fix these cars, right? So they they get paid more. They require more training. It requires more sophisticated equipment for these cars. They utilize a dedicated bench system. Right, for any framework or measuring out the chassis. And, uh, and our technicians receive ongoing training as required by the manufacturer. And this, tech, this training is both technical and mechanical. All right? uh, so they are more expensive on the body shop side. Hence, the 22% variance right in your insurance. Insurance companies know this. Well, they didn't at first, I don't think. But they certainly know it now because these cars have been out there for about eight years. All right? And you know, they, they definitely have the law of averages now with respect to their auto body expenses. And it's high. It's high. I get, I get 125 an hour in my shop. All right? 125 an hour. I mean, you know, 
you don't got to be a uh, math whiz to you know to figure that out, right? It's not going to take long before that bill is going way over five thousand real quick. All right, on average, those cars usually about, average about ten thousand dollars on a body on a body repair. All right, on average. Um, so there you have it, folks. All right, they're they're more expensive to insure, more expensive to maintain, and more expensive to fix if you get in an accident. All right. So you heard it first here at Crash Course, of course. This is what we do, right? You know the mantra. We're giving you information and knowledge you need and can use and advice you can trust. Very true and very necessary today in today's mishmash world of mass information, mostly uh, mass information and mostly mass misinformation. I don't like to, I don't like to use disinformation too much. All right, that of course that. Uh, that carries a, a sense of, you know, purpose, you know, some kind of uh, mischief involved or nefarious activity. And don't get me wrong, there is a lot of disinformation out there, right? We, we're exposed to it every day. I get it. And unfortunately, in the insurance industry and the body shop side, body shop guys don't get off here, there is disinformation. There just is, right? Um, but there is more misinformation. But if you listen to us here at Crash Course, right, if you follow me here at this podcast, all right, and you become a member, you just, please go. Oh, we, hey, listen, we have a YouTube channel. I forget that all the time, Anthony. We have a YouTube channel. Please go there. If you're a big YouTube buff, go find us over there and subscribe to the channel. All right, check us out. we got a lot of stuff over there. It's not just the podcast. There's some other stuff that's been sitting there as well. Um, check us out. Subscribe. Become a member. All right, we definitely are adding to our flock over there, and we like to keep uh, keep increasing the herd. Um, at any rate, uh, so go over there and check that out, please. And as usual, you know, we're on Instagram, we're on Spotify, Facebook, of course. Our Facebook page is very active. Um, thanks to the diligent work of uh, my uh, my good friend and uh, engineer and podcast master extraordinaire, Anthony. So. Um, but, uh, yeah, but uh, we're growing in leaps and bounds, and thank you very much for all the support out there. Please continue to spread the word. All right, I really think we're doing, um, I really think we're doing great work here with respect to, uh, you know, helping the folks. All right? And that's what we try and do, help the folks. I mean, listen, we do also promote and support the privately owned guys in the auto body industry here in Long Island. Absolutely. All right, that's part of our mission. And with the podcast, though, we're really psyched to be able to reach more folks now, getting more people on board getting people interested and getting, you know, hopefully like at least jarring your conscience a little bit. I know this stuff isn't great. It's not coffee table fair. It's not barbecue fair, right? You're not going to pop a brewski. And, hey, how's it going, man? You know, the other day I decided to whip out my insurance policy and go to town on that sucker, man. I wanted to read some of that. <laughs> all right. Nobody's reading it. All right. I get it. Um, we read it. I read it. All right. And then I explain it to you. Uh, but seriously, folks, um, it's all, it's, all, it's all necessary because, believe it or not, sooner or later, okay, sooner or later, you're going to be, you're going to be needing to understand this. I, like I just said, I mean, it's statistically, every 10 years, you will be involved in some kind of fender bender. I'm not saying it's going to be a train wreck, God forbid, but it's going to be some kind of an accident. And most likely, it's going to happen within 25 square miles of your residence. Again, it's a fact. All right. That is a fact, statistical fact. Uh, so, you know, we, we felt it was very important because of all the misinformation out there. And there is a lot of misinformation and it does come from your insurance company as well. All right. They have ulterior motives. Um, they want to, you know, you've heard me say this before. They want to lower expenses, you know, the whole nine yards. They want to control costs, lower expenses. And at the same time, still fulfill the promise they made to you, which was what? Get your car fixed, get you back on the road. All right, but there's a myriad of ways of doing that. All right, and uh, a lot of them, uh, in my humble opinion, and in the, in the opinion of Collision Services Network, uh, we just don't feel that they're uh, they're consistent with the best outcome for the consumer. They're good, they're consistent with the best outcome for them, right? The insurance guys, but not for you. All right, and uh, you know certainly not for our friends in the auto body industry as well. All right, so if you continue to listen to this podcast, you will be one smart cookie when it comes to matters related to auto body and the mechanical to, to a lesser extent, but and and put an emphasis on this, the insurance, uh, the insurance company. 
All right, so, uh, you know, take back control, right? Let's take back control. I, I like that. I think we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna set that off today with take back control. All right, that's going to be the caption today for this podcast, take back control, taking back control. All right, so what do I mean by that, taking back control? Right? Are we gonna are we taking over the government or the you know some local post office or something? <laughs> some of us, some of you out there might want to do that too. I hear you, um, but that's not, that's another podcast. You could probably find some guy doing that. Um, <laughs> I might join that podcast if I find it myself. Um, but no, I'm talking about taking control of of what you okay, you and I, all right, what you and I pay a lot of money into. Right? And our party to our insurance policy. Right? Take back control of that. Right? Understand, understand what you're paying for. I, I tell you folks, like I said, you know, you know the I mean, you know the you know the whole uh, the whole history. I mean, if you don't, I'll run through it real quick here. I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna give you a resume, but I was in the industry for almost thirty years. I'm on the collision side nine years, did uh, various different jobs and responsibilities in the insurance company as well as an independent adjuster. And I gotta tell you, when I you know, when I was settling claims a lot of ignorance, a lot of ignorance out there, all right? And ignorance is not bliss, all right? Hello, hello. Ignorance is not bliss, all right? Um, I wanted to get everybody's attention on that one, right? I know it sounds funny, but um, in other instances, you know, it might be funny and it might be applicable. It's not applicable in the insurance industry. In fact, if you're ignorant, that's great for them. They love that. They love ignorant. Um, but don't be the ignorant person, right? If you're listening to me, you're never going to be ignorant. Are you going to be the, smart, the smartest person out there? Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so take back control. Understand what you pay for. I get I get so worked up. I used to even get, I used to laugh when I when I was the insurance guy. I was like, man, it's amazing how many people just peel off every month. Bada boom, bada bing, bada boom, right? Paying, paying, or writing the check, writing the check. And nobody even, nobody even understands what the hell they're paying for. Nobody gives a shit. You're just writing that check year after year, you know, month after month. And then all of a sudden, bam, right? Your wife comes in all upset. Oh, my God, I hit the pole. I hit the guy. You know, your daughter or your son got in an accident. And now everybody's throwing their hands up in the air, scratching their head. I don't know where the hell to take the car. I don't know who to who to fix the car. You know, little Johnny never had an accident. I don't know anything about body shops. And, and now we got to call the insurance company. I don't even know if we have coverage. I don't know what my deductible is. I don't even know what I should do or who I should talk to. That's it, folks. I work in a body shop, right? I'm not an academic or a talking head. I'm talking from real experience. I deal with this every day. And it's not good. I mean, listen, if you come to my shop, right? Or if you go to a Collision Service Network shop, collisionservicenetwork.com, that's where you want to go. And you pick one of our amazing network partners. And this isn't going to happen, right? Because they're going to walk you through the process. And that's cool. That's great. I mean, that's, you know, that's what we're here for. That's what we want to do. But you, you should be more informed. We pay a lot of money. In fact, if you took out your calculator and added that up over 10 years, you'd probably have a heart attack, right? Especially if you've never had a claim. So it's important that you take back control of that entire process, that enti- those entire circumstances, right? You are a party to that contract. I know it doesn't seem like you didn't sit down, negotiate stuff and that, but think about it. But it's funny because... I'm looking around here. I'm thinking to myself, but wait a minute. We don't. We really do take part in it, right? The insurance company would have us believe we don't, but we do. You go to an agent, a broker, wherever you go to get your insurance, right? Online, you just buy it online, right? If you're dealing with the uh, with the uh, the gecko people and stuff like that, <laughs> um, we got the gecko, we got the goony bird, or whatever the hell that thing is, the uh, the loony bird, or the emu, whatever the hell it is. And, you know, and then we got the rat or the, the bunny. Uh, we got all kinds of shit out there, right? When it comes to these insurance companies, gimmicks, gimmicks beyond gimmicks. But uh, you know, it's not really funny <laughs> because they don't save us any money, and then they want to screw us when we need them. Anyway, I digress again. Um, you, we really do, we really do participate, though, right? You go in, you need insurance. I need car insurance, right? I'm buying a new car. I'm all excited. Terrific. What do I need? Well, you need collision and you need comp. Fantastic. All right. What else do I need? You need this, this, and this. All right. How much of all that do you want? What do you mean? Well, it's mandatory that you have this, but over here, you can have this, and you can have this much of this, or this much of that, or as little of this, a little of that. So, folks, think about it. We really are participating in this process. 
All right? And yet, yet, when that's all said and done and we walk out the door, we never want, we never want to think about it again or have anything to do with it. All right? How many people out there, all right, I'm looking at the camera, how many people out there right now, right now, can honestly say that they've taken a look at their coverages and their policy within the last six months? Right? <laughs> probably nobody. Right? Or may, maybe one. Maybe there's a few people out there. But mo- most people are probably laughing and going, I never look at that thing. You know, I don't even know where it is. You probably don't even know where it is because it's probably all digital shit that they, God forbid, they send. Back in my day, you actually got a copy of the policy. And I used to love that because I tell everybody, did you read your policy? <laughs> I knew what the answer was, but I was required to say it. Did you read the policy? No, I didn't. Well, you should because <laughs> now I'm going to screw you. <laughs> No, I didn't say that, but inside, that's what I was thinking. You didn't read the policy. You're supposed to. Oh, all right. Well, I, I never do. Okay, well, now now you're going to get screwed. No. Okay. All right. Well, now I'm going to help you. Um, <laughs> they really should say that, though, the insurance the insurance adjusters. They should say that. Well, now you're going to get screwed by us. Ha-ha. Uh-huh. Um, but you're not going to get screwed, right? Everybody everybody on Crash Course, everybody at Crash Course is not going to get screwed because we're going to screw them. Right? You're going to turn the screws on them because now you know. Right? You listen to this podcast, you're going to know. Um, so, I mean, seriously, though, folks, right? In the last six months, have you even looked at it? I mean, do you know if your coverages are good? Do you know if you have enough or too much or not enough? You know, or not enough of one, too much of the other, or maybe none of any of them? Right? Maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you added, maybe, I mean, look, your home, look at homeowners, homeowners, right? Who knows anything about homeowners? Homeowners is like this. <laughs> this like enigma. Even for me, I've been in the industry 30 years. Hurricane Sandy came. I, I got done taking care of everybody else. And I said, wow, now I can take care of me. And State Farm came and they put the screws right to me. Uh, you know, I mean, it was uh, by the time they got done with me, my, you know, my, uh, my, uh, my backside was three times the size it was before the adjuster came. <laughs> All right. And it wasn't fun either. Um, but seriously, folks, all right, I was in the industry, the business, and I, I got screwed, all right? Uh, it's amazing. So that's why it's so important that you're involved in the process. Take back control. Take it back. Make sure you're controlling the outcome. You're controlling, you're controlling the process if you're making a claim, and you're controlling the outcome if you're if you know if you're buying insurance or you know upgrading or, or checking your coverages, I used to say uh, on the radio, "Shop your insurance." Right? People used to scratch their head. What the hell is he talking about? Shop your insurance. I didn't shop it. I went to the agent. He gave me a policy. <laughs> That's not exactly what I mean. What I mean by shop your insurance is every six months, take a look at it. Wherever you got to look at it, I keep saying look at it like it's paper. I know it's probably not, but uh, find it. All right, find it. You look at your mortgage. Right. You should every time your payment comes, right? I mean, I used to look at that. That was important to me, right? You look at your car payment, you look at your mortgage and all sorts of shit. Look at your policy. Take back control. Know what you're paying for. Understand why you're paying for it and make sure it's what you need, okay? And then listen to me, Crash Course, right? And you'll understand how to use those coverages and what you should expect from your insurance company if you need to. All right. All right, folks, I think we're going to wrap it up here on this amazing episode. All right. I hope you got a little out of that. I hope you had a little little chuckle, too. I, I try and, always try and put a little levity in there. <laughs> um, yeah, so take back control, all right? Let's stop the nonsense, all right? Let's not let the insurance companies control the process. Let's, let's us control the process, all right? And you can do that. You can do that. With the help of Collision Service Network, go to CollisionServiceNetwork.com, right? If you would, if you listen, if you listen to this podcast, please go there. Podcast, please go there, and opine and leave us a little uh, nicey. Let us know what you think. All right, are we doing a good job? Is it exciting? You want to see more? You know, different content. Yeah, whatever it is, um, or you just think the website's great, right? Go check it out. CollisionServiceNetwork.com. We got an amazing network of uh, client auto body guys there, and they're just waiting to hear from you for anything. You got a dent, you got a ding, you got a massive uh, big mess. All right, God forbid. Um, Go there and find the shop that's going to work for you. All right, all right, see you next time.